people ask me a lot. Um, I talk to um, editors or producers or um, even people in film school of what's the difference between owning a business and being a freelancer. Um, and I think it's right there, which I think is my first answer to your question, which is, um, you know, I've, I've worked with at this point, God, uh, probably 10,000 different entrepreneurs That's and business owners a in, lot. A in some lot. capacity. Um, and I, I think the mindset that gets people stuck a lot in that is um, focusing too much on the craft of what they're doing. Um, or, um, you know, some people would say um, focusing too much on production and not enough on the company itself. Um, Absolutely. And, and I, I think people don't do that on purpose. I think people open businesses or start their self-employment is really what 90% of them are mm -hmm. um, because they like doing the thing that they like to do and that they're good at. And one of the ways that I describe it, you're kind of just reinforcing mm -hmm. that is doing what you do for a living or doing what your business does for a living and growing and running a business are two things that have nothing to do with each other. Hi, I'm Erin Marcus former corporate executive turned entrepreneur and founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business. Welcome to the Ready Yet podcast. We're excited to bring you more than 100 episodes of interviews and insights designed to help entrepreneurs get the financial and emotional freedom they need in order to build a business and a life they're proud of. Welcome, welcome to this episode of the Ready Yet podcast. And today's guest, I'm excited because probably unbeknownst to you, you were there for me when the journey started. Like the day I met you at a Suzanne Evans event, and maybe it was in Arizona, like I didn't even know what coaching was. Like I didn't even know that was a thing. I come out of corporate. Yeah, and neither did I. <laughs> neither did you, right? And my my background, I don't know if I ever shared this with you before, is the way I ended up at that event is I live in Chicago. So when someone says, hey, you want to go stay at this nice resort in Phoenix for a few days? It's this thing. It's like $97. You just say yes, right? It doesn't even matter why. It's just get me out of here before we can steal ourselves for a winner. So that being said, why don't you give everybody an official introduction, David, to what who you are and what you do, and we can share your journey that I'm really excited to learn more about myself, actually. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, my name is David Vance. I am a video producer slash uh, president of a video production company. Um, we work with small and medium-sized businesses as well as uh, governmental and nonprofit organizations uh, to make uh, video content that turns strangers into fans and fans into paying clients. Um, that's the slick that's marketing copy. Um, <laughs> basically, I, I mean, yeah, basically we make cool stuff that people like to look at so that they'll look at it more. <laughs> right. So that they can get to know you. So, all right. So backing up, because I love the comment that like I said, I didn't know what coaching was a thing and you said you didn't either. I think you have a really interesting foray into entrepreneurship because you kind of came into it from what I know as an employee at a huge coaching company. So it was this mixture of, yes, you're an employee, but you're already immersed and surrounded by entrepreneurs. Yeah, uh, it, it's taken some twists and turns. Uh, this started in 20, 2014. I was in my last year of college. Uh, I had ill-advisedly uh, attended film school, um, getting a liberal arts degree. And, um, you know, you get to that uh, that point at the end where you start making compromises, not compromises, but, um, you know, all of that time spent making avant-garde short films and uh, social documentaries uh, is super fun. And then you have to figure out a way to make a paycheck. Um, I, I had been working as an electrician during my summers and okay. did not want to return to doing that ever again. Um, Cause uh, you know, it, it's not easy. It's, yeah, there's this weird white collar obsession with telling people they should go into the trades. And uh, all of those people saying that are people who have never worked outside digging a ditch in 105 exactly. degree weather. 
I always um, said that about people who go to go into HVAC. If you want to be in an industry where you will never be comfortable, physically comfortable a day in your life, right? You're working in hot weather in summer and cold weather in winter. Yeah, it's it, it it's rough. So uh, you know, I um, you know, I was graduating with a, a film degree, which is. Uh, pretty similar to graduating with no degree as far as uh, getting <laughs> you into lit, doors right? places. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, I knew um, I, I had gotten some good responses to things I had made. Um, I knew I could be helpful to somebody, but I, I mean, I was I, I was down to the wire um, trying to get my foot in doors places. I actually, um, you had mentioned um, getting that first job, uh, it was actually the day of my college graduation, which I skipped to go to the interview. Um, I just called everybody and told them not to come and <laughs> drove down to, uh, at the time, the office was in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, and drove down from North Carolina, uh, super nervous, uh, interviewed uh, with Suzanne Evans, if people know her. Uh, it was a uh, a large company. I knew that it was something video related. I knew they were looking for a video editor, um, got the job that day, uh, and then uh, came in the next week and was like, okay, so what is it that this company I... does? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say, you know, having gone the more traditional route of going to college and getting a job in corporate that, by the way, I have a journalism degree. So again, great communication skills, no ability to get a job that sure. didn't have, right? Same type of thing. But um, you beat me because I worked at a temp agency for three months while I was looking for my first job after college. So you, you've got me there. So what did you, I mean, I can't even imagine what you had to think going from being an electrician during the summer <laughs> and but you haven't had the cubicle experience to compare it to though yeah you know i i, I was um uh, running conduit running wire um during my summers and then uh during uh, my other times living the bohemian artist uh you know living in a house with five other people making short films um and then thrown from that into uh uh, just uh, yeah it, just a very regimented job it, it was actually one of the best things that could have happened for me um long term um uh, those couple of years spent there from 22 to uh, age 22 to 23 uh like like I, I i remember that first month like i didn't know what the word copy meant when i was 22 like, like people kept people kept using it and i was like okay so they're making copies for something and then um <laughs> finally my, my boss at that time had to explain it like it's just the words that it's um, just the words in, end up on that. i was like okay well i can words. do that yes. um yeah it, it, it was uh, it was interesting I, I was um you know getting a paycheck i was getting uh so i was still getting to make things i was getting the experience of getting to make things that other people would actually pay for, which would end up becoming um, very Important. valuable. I was learning to speak that language of being able to uh, start at the end and start in outcomes and start with calls to action of like, okay, here's what we want this to do. Yes. Um, and then talk people back through it towards, um, you know, so here's what we're going to do and somehow well infuse what I love about that is you came into your entrepreneurial journey in a way where you didn't have to unlearn decades of the opposite of how entrepreneurial things work. Yeah, um, I, I, absolutely. I, I think, um, I, I, I think I came in that with very little programming Mm -hmm. um, of, you know, people I work with now even, um, or I'm breaking down, uh, media and ad plans or, um, big video projects are, are still approaching this with, um, sort of with the mindset of all these fail safes and all of this bureaucracy around, uh, things. I think people, uh, people can become accustomed to not, to not making decisions and to pushing decisions places. Right? Um, so, that was uh, a know. big shock to me as I got older, 
the, mm-hmm. the one of the things that surprised me as I became an adult and a more successful adult was that the majority of adults, the majority of people I would meet were extremely hesitant to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I think it comes back to um, uh, this idea of establishing the business as separate from yourself. Uh, I, I think people come in uh, with this mindset of, you know, all of a sudden the money, yeah, it, it's their investment, but they start equating the money within the business as like, you know, you want to take $5,000 from me. That's, uh, I don't know how many months rent it would have been at 24. Now it's like one. Um, <laughs> now it's about but, a six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, um, I, I think people get paralysis uh, mm-hmm. when it's, you know, their own money on the line. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think it's kind of fun. I always thought it was kind of fun. It's like, uh, uh, it's it's like betting on your own horses. So I'm going to switch gears on you a little bit because I think, again, you had this advantage, multiple viewpoints. You worked, so you were immersed in mm-hmm. what is a successful coaching company. You were surrounded with clients who were a mix of successful and not as successful of at several different stages. And you were immersed in them. You were very aware of what they were doing. And now you're running your own entrepreneurial endeavor. Like what are, this might put you on the spot a little bit. Like what do you see is the big differences between the people who are successful you know, leaving the definition Mm -hmm. of success wide open to whatever anybody wants it to be. But what is the difference between those people and companies you see are able to be successful and the ones that kind of hold on and continue to struggle? Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll I'll take that in a couple of different ways. Um, For one thing, when I left that first job, I I moved to New York and, um, you know, the, the, the big capital P plan had always been to work in TV. So um, I did that for several years, Um, worked in reality TV. You know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a senior editor. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, attack projects and um, work for 40 weeks a year nonstop and then take 10 weeks off and um, eventually get into shows I liked. Um, And after a, a, a years of doing that, I, I took a look around um, and realized that the people who were doing that, who were in their 40s and 50s, they didn't look particularly pleased with it. Um, so I, I, I think um, my big decision point was um, that I, I didn't want to be stuck doing that and needed to figure out a way to build something instead of uh, staying in that sort of uh, dollars per hours, uh, mm-hmm. kind of mindset. You know, people ask me a lot. Um, I talk to, um, editors or producers or, um, even people in film school of what's the difference between owning a business and being a freelancer. Um, and I think it's right there, which I think is my first answer to your question, which is, um, you know, I've, I've worked with at this point, God, uh, probably 10,000 different entrepreneurs and business owners a in, lot. A in some lot. capacity. Um, and I, I think the mindset that gets people stuck a lot in that is um, focusing too much on the craft of what they're doing. Um, or, um, you know, some people would say um, focusing too much on production and not enough on the company itself. Um, Absolutely. And, and I yeah. think people don't do that on purpose. I think people open businesses or start their self-employment is really what 90% of them are Mm -hmm. um, because they like doing the thing that they like to do and that they're good at. And one of the ways that I describe it, you're kind of just reinforcing that is doing what you do for a living or doing what your business does for a living and growing and running a business are two things that have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, it, um, it it was a gradual lesson for me. Um, I think, you know, now there are weeks where I don't even enter an edit lab uh, or, um, you know, there are entire projects that I never actually get my hands on. So how do you feel cuts. about that? I mean, coming out of film school, doing, yeah. you, know, doing you know what you're doing because you love the craft of it. How do you feel about doing the craft less and less? 
It, it's interesting. Uh, it, I think the older I get, the more I am okay with it. Um, you know, there's um, uh, it, it becomes addictive, especially when you're on your own to um, meet revenue goals more, um, to focus more on uh, making sure something stays alive rather than right. uh, just keeping gears running. It becomes a different priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, I still try to have fun with it. Uh, you know, I, I, I keep final cut on all of um, any projects, any courses, any uh, marketing things. Um, so uh, we still try to have fun. I think I think the uh, the big idea is just to make sure that I have people in line who are aligned with that yeah. uh, that bigger vision of and just. Um, uh, the, the company's tastes and sensibilities, because I think ultimately that's uh, what somebody's hiring us for. And doing it on purpose, because one of the things that I feel very strongly about is that anything anybody chooses to do is perfectly fine as long as they're choosing it on purpose as opposed to just letting it happen to them. So if someone wants to be a freelancer, if someone wants to be mm -hmm. self-employed, that's freaking fantastic. Go for it. But those are much bigger and different decisions to become a business owner than to become self-employed. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And I think there are also people um, who make the decision to start a business and then um, don't actually play that game. <laughs> you know, I, right. I think one of I think one of the biggest things that I, I touched on this earlier is um, people who mistake the company's money for their own money. Um, and the other way around, uh, that I, I see a lot of people, uh, doing this version of, uh, catastrophizing things of, um, you know, they, they come to an investment decision or they want to create something, but their mind goes through this whole idea of, um, you know, what's the worst possible thing that can happen. And if, you know, if you're playing again with your rent money or, uh, right. you know, the money you're planning on. Uh, spending on tuition the next year, it's really hard to make those decisions. I think that uh, I think it, uh, getting out of that headspace and starting uh, looking at it um, from a more objective point of view uh, is really crucial for somebody. Loving what you're learning here and interested in more? Check out our free Facebook group and join us at Conquer Your Business Community to find even more tips and tools designed to help you get out of reaction mode and into conquering your own business. And one of the things that I've experienced personally is that it's actually an evolution, that it doesn't have to be a one day decision and that's the only time you get that decision. Like in my personal journey, when I started the current, my current business, Conquer Your Business, I really was focused on creating the personal brand because that was what I had to do first. Mm -hmm. And now in the last six, 12 months, I've literally gone through everything that happens and changed my perspective. Okay, if we're not growing Aaron the coach and we're growing Conquer Business the company, Conquer Your Business the company, how would I make this decision? Yeah. And I think that's an interesting point you brought up, and it's one I've been thinking about is this idea of um, of, of like patience coming into something. Of uh, okay, the remember... fact that you just said I came up with something that reflects patience. <laughs> well, it, is, it, 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 I don't know if I should just fall down or <laughs> it's not. I would I, never I, guess that, but yes, I see I, what you're I, saying. Well, like it's 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 like a patient urgency. A patient urgency. Um, okay, yeah, I, 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 I found. Yeah, I mean, I find myself, um, you know, day uh, day four of officially being in business and uh, being like, oh my god, uh, like I, yeah, you know, I, I haven't hit my goal, I haven't um, hit a thing, and uh, just being able to accept that uh, that idea of uh, what what you do now isn't the last thing you'll ever do, and it's not a permanent decision, and uh, you know, you can try some stuff, and maybe in two years, something's different, and it's growing, or it's transitioning, I think, um, I, I think that's pretty cool, I, th I think myself included, some of us are kind of hardwired, um, for this idea of every decision I make is going to be the most important one ever. And it's the um, only time you ever get to make it. And I think that humans get messed up by that 
I think our default is binary thinking. I think humans in general, our default is binary thinking. We're either, we're, we're either a success or a failure, right? And the truth is none of it is binary. Like the truth of it is very few things are that cut and dry. Yeah, that, uh, like I mentioned, I, th- I think uh, I think I have certain anxieties that I'm prone to um, when it comes to uh, catastrophization, ca- catastrophizing <laughs> things, or uh, yeah. that um, you know, behind every uh, behind every door is either uh, you know the thing that's going to make or break the company, or um, I'm going to become insolvent in uh, in eight <laughs> weeks, and I'm going to be living on the street, and um, you know um, my family's going to leave me, and everybody will point and laugh. Uh, when right. in reality, I mean, nothing, no decision in my life has ever gone that poorly, you know, right, or uh, been that quite as important as we, you know, right. as we think it is. And I do think it's, you know, learning that and being able to remember that, remember in the moment that this is all just a process. There is no success or failure. It's all just an iteration. Can you get to the point, you know, know, can you get to the point where in the moment you remember that so it doesn't throw you? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's just a, um, I I think it is sort of just a choice and a learned muscle there. I I, I come across a lot of people, um, uh, you know, if if I'm just having uh, whatever a pre-pre-production call is, like an interest call with somebody, they're like, you know, um, uh, just last week I was talking to somebody and um, uh, I always start with something that's like, okay, so um, where's the business now? Um, what are your goals for 2020? Well, I, whatever the year is, what are your goals for 2022? <laughs> um, and, you know, where do you want to be at the end of 2023? Um, this this particular um, business owner uh, was very interested in um, gr- growing a brand, you know, basically um, getting out there. She wasn't necessarily looking to convert off of sales. She was looking to uh, reestablish a brand based on, um, you know, a higher value level, something that could attract more of the clients she's looking for. Um, So I laid out uh, a a plan. I was like, okay, so here's what we can do through video. Um, Here's what we're doing. Um, And uh, she just said, you know, I'm I'm not quite ready for that. And I think the question becomes, you know, it's fine if you don't want to do the thing that I'm offering you, but you've already said where it is you want to go. If, if you're not going to work with me or you're not going to go down this road, at least pick another road down towards it. And truthfully, I think that's an advantage that you have. And I, you know, while we still have a few minutes, I'd love to tap into your (laughs) knowledge around the video content, because I noticed that when you and I talk about what we're going to do together, and I know a lot of tacticians. I know a lot of video people. I know a lot of copy mm-hmm. editor because of what I do. I know a lot of people who do the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Most of them ask different questions. Oh, most of them say, okay, so what are you trying to do? And what mm-hmm. you were able to learn by being immersed in the world you were in, kind of like circling back to where we started was none of that matters if you don't know where you're going. You know, I watch people, I call it, nobody does the work before they go to work. They go out there, they do random acts of marketing, they do random acts of business, but there's no goal at the end of the journey, or at least for this six months or this year that they're trying to remember to point towards. And I do think that's one of the advantages you have with your different experiences is knowing that that's where you have to start. Yeah. And I think ultimately, if you, in my experience, uh, talking to people, if you talk it through enough with them, it's really all they care about. Um, uh, you know, our ideal client is somebody who likes, um, you know, what wants to make something interesting for making something interesting's sake. But beyond that, it's, uh, you know, what is this doing for me long-term? I, I, I like to reiterate to people, um, you know, no one piece of video content is ever going 
to be the thing that makes or breaks um, uh, your company. We need to look at you know the next fifty pieces that are coming out. Uh, you know how people are experiencing a brand going for that, and um, you know fifty pieces of video content is about a year's worth. So uh, at the end of your next year, um, what do you want someone to find uh, when they Google you? Well, into so to that end, I'd love for you to just share the flip side of that. What we all know, video is the dominant way that we are now communicating. It's the first thing we see. It's what people want. I mean, we know this. You have to kind of like be under a rock to not know there's, you've got to be on video in some way. What do you think is the biggest mistake that you're watching entrepreneurs make that if you were to give them one tip, say, you know, yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, the, the selfish uh, salesy answer is not hiring somebody whose job it I is. I don't disagree um, with that. I think yeah. you need a mix of professional, impromptu. You totally need a mix. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I say that as somebody who uh, sells video packages for a living, but uh, it, That's okay. there I is don't a truth sell to video it. packages and I second that. So, yeah. Uh, well, there is a truth to it in fact. Um, you know, I, I think especially when you start getting to um, to a, a early to mid six figure level, you start having some structure to the company who's looking out for it. I think they fall into uh, a couple of different traps when it comes to hiring uh, people out for their more professional video stuff. Either they are uh, hiring a traditional video production company, full service video production is what it would come down to. Um, they pay, um, you know, they're, they're investing probably at that level at the very low end for, uh, video content, probably about eight grand more traditionally, more towards 20 sometimes, uh, for all of this gorgeously shot video. And then they sign a contract and then these, uh, producers and editors say, okay, so what do you want us to shoot? Um, and they're kind of left out to dry with some beautiful cinematography. Um, the other, on the other side, sometimes people will hire these high dollar consultants, uh, who will, uh, you know, it's, one of my pet peeves now is it's really easy to call yourself an expert on the internet. Um, right, so yes. the idea of, um, you know, I'm a video marketing uh, expert. Uh, I'm going to come in, I'm going to look at what you're doing. Um, they show up, they write up, you know, here's what you should be doing. And then they sort of disappear into the ether. Um, I think people need both strategy and production um, yeah. on the higher end. Uh, but I think uh, also a traditional ex answer as far as, not as, as far as the mistakes people are making is um a, a common thing you know the traditional answer would be not doing it but right. i think a more precise answer is there is this uh th this sort of secular church of content that everybody subscribed to of uh you know a few people have gotten very rich off of this idea of saying you know you you just have to blast out content 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 um uh and uh, partially that's true you know you can catch uh you can catch a fish without bait if you throw out enough lines but um i, I think it's the idea of like you said just not looking forward towards, you know, how are these supporting each other? What is this even doing? Um, what is the long-term plan for this or the short-term plan for this? And uh, how am I going to get people to watch it? That was yeah. a very long-winded answer that hopefully uh, got something. <laughs> it, in there. You know, it aligns with so much of what I, what I teach as well. Um, one of the reasons I hesitated to become a coach until I figured out how to work around it is I felt there were so many people out there telling you what to do but mm -hmm. nobody was telling you how to do it, right? We can yeah. all reiterate a list of what you're supposed to do, but can you help someone know how to do it? That's a big differentiator that's oddly missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's also this idea of um, uh, the reason... Um, uh, a major reason most people in this field fail or the majority of these companies go bankrupt is that people aren't very good at doing what do they say they do. Yes, um, that's the other part. <laughs> yes, yeah, um, pe people either come in with a 
uh, you know, a vague interest or uh, a life experience and decide they're going to make a career out of that without um, either there's not a market for it or they're not really an expert um, or uh, they come in and uh, just are fully unequipped to do anything that they're promising. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if people want to get a hold of you, and I highly, highly recommend, I have, I've written down three ideas. I know we're talking about doing a project in fall. I've written down three yeah. new ideas just from this conversation about what that's going to entail. Um, what is the best way for somebody to get a hold of you? Yeah, um, I didn't bring anything to sell or any sort of free. Quite YouTube, all right. Well, uh, we got you thing. covered. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to have a fun talk. Uh, but if anybody's um, interested in uh, starting to do video, if they're just sort of wondering what that looks like for their level uh, or where they're at, uh, or if they have a specific project uh, or event that they're uh, just wondering what their options are, um, you can find our website at expoundmediagroup.com forward slash contact if you want it, but there's a big contact button if you just type in expoundmediagroup.com. <laughs> Um, uh, so, awesome. uh, yeah, drop us a line, um, uh, mention that you heard it here. We'll set something up and, uh, just talk it out. Awesome. Sounds good. And I'm looking forward to implementing all my ideas with you in a couple months. Hello.